before I live, had a good break with friends and families and I hope you have had a good one too. It's good to be back on deck for what will be a challenging year. Now I don't take for granted the privilege I have to be your voice each night to raise the issues I know you care about and say many of the things here that I know you're thinking of saying but are worried in these woke times that you can't say aloud. Well I think I can predict this will be a year of pushing back. I think that's part of the mess the Albanese government has got itself into by misreading the public mood for being so out of touch. As always here on Credlin, we'll be pushing to make things better. A stronger economy, a safer world, and a much more confident Australia. And we'll use my experience in Canberra to borrow Don Chip's phrase to keep the bastards honest. So what's happened over summer that I think you need to pick up on and what's ahead of us for 2024? Well, January, as you know, is normally when we get all of our credit card bills from Christmas. And while there was a summer where I think a lot of us pulled our horns in spending-wise and cut back with our Christmases and perhaps like many of you holidayed at home, there's no doubt 2024 is when we will get more economic pain from Labor. Now I'm not so much talking here about interest rates, although they will be higher for longer because of poor government policy. I'm talking about the things the government is doing that makes harder times worse like its crazy energy obsession with renewables. Last week, Federal Labor stopped the expansion of the Port of Hastings in Victoria to protect World Heritage wetlands. And in the process, enraged state Labor who want a massive expansion of offshore wind. Meanwhile, an outage at Victoria's coal-fired power plants in the Latrobe Valley is threatening blackouts. Last week, as the Australian newspaper reports this morning, Lo Yang A was offline four times in four days following an eight-day outage over the New Year period. Energy experts are warning this makes Victoria's power grid inherently unstable in a state where brown coal still provides over 60% of energy electricity generation. A state, I might add, that hates coal, but is using taxpayer funds to keep open the coal power plants it wants to eventually close down. You figure that one out. So much for the PM's pre-election promise to cut your power bill by $275 per year. So far, they've gone up by well over 20% on his watch, making the cost of living crisis worse because high power prices hurt us at home. Of course they do. But they also feed into the cost of almost everything else. Now, is it any wonder that the latest polls published in yesterday's News Corp papers have Labor bleeding on cost of living? More than half of all Australians believe the country's headed in the wrong direction, says the poll. Two-thirds say they don't expect the government to do anything to fix the problems in the next six months. And a whopping 80% of us say the PM and his government has failed to address Australia's cost of living crisis. Right now, forget productivity, which the Reserve Bank says is key to building our prosperity. The government's only economic driver is immigration, and that's a problem. Because record levels of immigration are making cost of living crises worse by putting downward pressure on wages and upward pressure on our housing costs. With the Albanese government now more than halfway through its first term, it's clear that it's being driven by events rather than being on top of them. Indeed, so worried were Labor insiders about the government's massive dive in support, it's now polling 50-50 in two-party preferred terms with the coalition, the Prime Minister came back to work in early January. Now, I watched this and I thought it was in very, very telling. Only this attempt by the PM at a reset, well, it fell flat because he had nothing to say when he returned. And straight after he left the microphone, he headed off to the cricket anyway. 